take your driving lesson now at dla-driving.co.uk. Welcome to Owen the Town, I'm Lou Gregory and here's what's coming up today. It's five now without a win for Luton as they go away to Bournemouth on the south coast and come away with a 2-1 defeat. No points this week and despite a pretty good second half, it wasn't to be. No last minute equaliser this time round, which I guess the last three games we have had enough of equalisers in the last minute. Let's just move on with that. Uh, let's look at Simon Sluger today as well. We saw a, a little comment on, on Twitter the other day. Is he at fault for most of the goals we're conceding this season? So we'll have a little discussion about that today. I'm going to answer your instant questions and plenty more. And Dave's back with us tonight alongside Bataro. Hey. Opposite me today. How are you both? You okay? Yeah, we're good, aren't we? Spot on, mate. Yeah, yeah. we're good. Yeah. We listened back to the podcast in a car last week, Bataro, and we noticed that when you're not close to the mic, it's really quite hard to hear you. So if you're driving to work right now and you're trying to listen to Batara and you have to like turn it up every time he talks, we apologise. We'll try telling him. Brilliant. There you go. <laughs> How about that? Hello. Oh, wow. That's much better. Much okay, better. That was a bit loud, man. All fairness. Sorry about that, people. But yeah. Hello. How was Bournemouth, guys? You hey, two Bournemouth, Bournemouth was a good trip. Let's say thank you to anyone who stopped us and said hello. That was really nice to, to meet you all. Um, I, I, the trip was good. The result was disappointing because we deserve more than we got. And Pataro mm. told you so last week. I said I'd written this one off. Oh, there we go. Mate, you write everything off in all fairness. You're the most negative person <laughs> I know. So in all fairness, that doesn't Oh, no, that's not anymore. true. That's not true. I just said last week, I thought it was going to be tough to get a result and I'd kind of written I'd written Bournemouth off. Hey, listen, yeah. if you'd have been there and seen what we saw, uh-huh. you'd have had a different opinion on that game. We still lost. Well, we still lost, but you wouldn't, you know, you would have thought, well, maybe I was wrong to write us off. Because that's what well, you did. Evidently not, because we... No, but at the result. time, the, no, the performance, the performance outweighed the result. Agreed. We were there, so... Shh. Yeah, the performance outweighed the result. Well... Oh, right no, no, okay, so you're right, no, you're no, we happy. didn't get the point. So I get your point, but the thing yeah. is, had you been there, you'd have thought it was an unjust result. Maybe. No, maybe. not maybe. Mm, definitely. 100%. Maybe. Definitely. Stop giving away silly goals and maybe I'll, I'll start thinking that. But if you're going to give Don't away goals like that, you can't expect, no matter how good you play in the second half, if you're going to be giving away stupid goals like we've been doing every single week at the moment. Why we you can't them? expect to get a point any, anywhere. You can't go. You can't say we expect to get a point in that second half from the goal. You just don't concede no. the, the silly goals. On the basis of going 2 0 down, no. And maybe being dominated for, say, for 25, 30 minutes of the first half, no. But in the second half, you've seen it. If you were there, like Dave said, then yes. Just say, mate. No, honestly, if you were there, we had so many chances. Even in the first half, we had two glorious chances. I saw chances. on Quest. Quest had pretty good extended highlights from Saturday. And yeah, it, but it, it's just like, we can't be going into second halves and playing well with two goals down. It's just, it, you're not no, going to get can't, points like that. No, we can't. But, you know, don't write the team off when you haven't seen the full performance. That's what I'm okay, trying just, to say. Just like, to go back to last week, right? A bit like you said that, you know, oh, uh, Cornet should have scored that chance and whatever else. Yeah. A bit like we shouldn't have gone... And conceded three goals in the second half. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Rolls reverse. So, you know, look, it's what it is. But we can expect to score two goals in the second half. Don't matter. They're born with it. doesn't matter. We had enough chances to do it. But, look, it didn't That's happen. True. So... Well, three go. word reviews for Saturday. Bournemouth 2, Luton 1. Richard says, spirited second half. Lauren says, deserved a draw. Graham says, no great surprise. Daniel says, keep the faith. John says, must do better. Uh, Sadie says one half team Ben Adebayo misses costly Lee desperately needing Mick Phil heading wrong way and Brad and many others said must take chances and it is another story of take our chances and it's potentially a different outcome on Saturday isn't it Sadie one half team Um, it's not true what did I say you said Sadie oh Sorry. That is a shocker, mate. That That's is. a shock, shock you're reading. Uh, sorry, what was the, what did you say? Uh, must take chance. Of course we must take chances. Yeah. Definitely. We sh- yeah, but we've had that a few times already this season. Yeah. We Obviously, last Saturday, we, don't, don't put your head on the table. 
Sorry, Matt. No, we must take chances, and that was proven. And we're going to talk about the game in a minute. So yeah, we do we do need to take our chances. Um, no great surprise. Well, Graham's in your in your area there, isn't he? No great surprise. Did I go to Bournemouth expecting us to win? No, but did I go to Bournemouth and then watch the game and think actually we could do this? Yes, that's what I would say. So I didn't expect to win. I was hoping that we'd get a result. And I think we deserved a result. So that's how I'm looking at it. See, I look at it, I don't expect anything. I don't expect us to lose. I don't expect us to not pick up points. I don't expect us to not win a game. I expect on what I see. And do you know what? And what I saw on Saturday, setting off, since we went 2-1 uh, down, sorry, I expected a point. So therefore, I expected then. Only because of the way the game was going. Mm-hmm. So look, don't expect or unexpect. So it doesn't matter. Just keep going. Whatever happens, happens. It was always going to be things. a tough game, though, because Bournemouth hadn't haven't lost all season. They're, they're now top of the league, aren't they? And it's like Nathan Jones said when he was comparing the chances Adebayo missed to like Solanke. Solanke's 20, 15, 20 mil. Adebayo's like, what, three quarters of a mil probably from Walsall. It's just like the levels are already huge. Yeah. But Adebayo should score after 10 minutes, shouldn't he? That ball from, yeah. from Cornick down the right-hand side was perfect. And look, last week there was a few that said Cornick should have scored, but this week he's put it on a plate for Adebayo. And I think Nathan Jones said um, Cornick probably should have a few more assists this season because he's got a score, Adebayo. It was a brilliant move, by the way. Mm. And, and you know, you expected that to go in. I, I genuinely, I've watched it back so many times. I don't know, did he did he get just a little bit, was he just a little bit behind it or a little bit in front of it? I can't, it feels like he tried to dig it out rather than, you know, it was an easy push in. He should score. The goal was there. It was gaping. It should go in. But I just wondered, did he just get his feet wrong a little bit? I'll be honest, I've not watched the highlights back, so I have no idea. But from when, obviously, when you see it, I don't care if the highlight, I haven't seen the highlights or not, he sh- should still be scoring. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's on the plate. It's an open goal, really, isn't and it? You, you obviously, you go on about 20 million pound strikers in Solanke and whatever else, and obviously the rest of the team being so, so expensive and whatever else. I don't get, give a fuck who you are. You're three yards out or four or five yards out, whatever you are. Like I said, I haven't seen the replay. Don't quote me on it. You should be scoring from there. Yeah, and don't 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 take away for the cross from Cornick was spot on. Yeah. Literally spot on. It's one of those, you know they're going to score when it goes over. So it was such a disappointment when it didn't go in. And that goes in. The game is totally different. But I suppose a few people out there probably, probably try and blame uh, Cornick for that cross as well. Saying, you know, no, don't be silly. Better. Don't no, be no, silly. No, it's a good... Man, no, I mean? Batara, that's a, bit, that's a bit of a silly thing to say. It was, it was spot those, on. Yeah. Some, people, some things people say are silly, so... Yeah. I say shoot your fingers. I think myself. that's harsh to say, though. People will dig out Cornick for that. that I was saying the piss, maybe. They're fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, last week you said, um, you know, we shouldn't have to score that Cornick chance to make it 4 0. And it was kind of the game where we still had other chances after the Adabeo chance. Literally, seconds later, he's closed down the keeper. And it's just like, I know you don't believe in luck, but it's just the way that ball's bounced or rebounded, not into his feet. Yeah. It's just. When well, you didn't well, have the luck, I did mean, we? Firstly, you've got to say, you know, give him give him the credit for charging it down the way he did. You know, he was probably really angry that he'd missed the first chance. Um, he chased it in, did really, really well. And you're right, he was unlucky that it didn't rebound to the right place. The keeper managed to recover it. There again, that could have been a second goal, couldn't it? It could have been 2-0 game over for us then, wouldn't it? Yeah. And well, then, I was obviously not the game. You text me saying... Just missed a sitter, and he texts me again saying, "Just closed down the keeper. Could have scored then." And then a minute later, one 0 down, and I just thought, "Okay, well that's that then." You, Typical, right? I, and that also, way. you know, even even when you look back at the goal and, and at the time, it was too easy. It was too easy the way they did it. I mean, the flick over, fine. I, I mean, that was a bit of that was a that was a good touch. That Christie looks a baller as well. To be fair to him, yeah. But the, the flick over the defence, that was a good touch. However, who the hell was marking there? Yeah, Where exactly. did how we'll did he end it. up on his own? You and I know. say, how has he had that much time to? Because they just let him run. They just let him into, into it was, it was ball watching. Surely, wasn't it? Like I said, I haven't seen the highlights back, but from no, obviously where we're sitting, I don't know. For me, it was ball watching. No one picked up the man. Everyone was like, "Oh, look at him! What's he doing on the ball there now?" No one pretty expected him to do that at the time, but look, it happens, doesn't it? The flick, the flick. You, you got to say the little. Touch over the top. Yeah, but he shouldn't have that much time well, to be able he, to do that. Yeah, but he, even that, it wasn't just him, was it? It was the run from... Who scored the goal? Billing. Yeah, so the run from Billing to get into that space, he was not tracked by anyone. 
at that point. He was just let go on his own. And that is why he scored. He had an open, go- he had an open chance, really. There was no challenge for him. Sluger wouldn't have had an absolute chance of saving that. Not a chance. So the, 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 the bit there, it wasn't, you know, I can admire the touch to him. But the person who was meant to be marking him or following him on that game, I can't remember who it was, should have done it, didn't, didn't do, do it, it, and he was on his own, and that's why they scored. Billing was um, dubbed as world class on Quest by Ian Holiday. Ian Holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Ah, uh, have, have you been drinking? Have you been drinking? Up. <laughs> should we just call it a day? Just end the podcast. Do it. No, nice come on, get on with it. Get on. Uh, Ian Holloway. Holiday. He said something about Billing becoming like world class or something. Yeah, so well, you know, the here's top. the thing about about him. He's he's gotcha. you know he's brilliant as a manager, isn't he? Um, he's so successful. He can spot world class players. Yeah, clearly. In all no. fairness, I said to you though a few times. What you got to watch Philip Billing. He is an unreal player. Well, look, he can be. On he his was, day, he's a lazy he, bastard, but you can see when he turns on, he does turn it on. And he scored with their first chance, really. Mm. And that's what that's what great. We started so well, and he scores with their first He's proper in international chance. as well. So, well, international or not, we let him get into the position to score. The issue so was Steve the issue though. was the, the issue de- was the defending. The defending, yeah. If we look at the um, going into this second half, then and, and the few chances that that we had, um, Bournemouth's keeper Travers made a, a, a few good saves. One of them was from that free kick in. Um, whipped in nearly no goal wasn't it that one yeah deflected yeah. off a Bournemouth player and he's he's kind of pulled a brilliant save out there, out there and then we did get the goal when Barry Barry puts the ball into the box nice little assist for Barry he's keeping up mm-hmm. his good form uh, Kelly puts it into his own net under pressure from Burke and at this time maybe you are thinking okay now we can now we ramp it up for 25 minutes left and then Adebay has another great chance with a header Mm. Uh, brilliant crossing from Clark. It's a free header, and they say on Quest as well. He's how is he not put it on target at least? Are we totally ignoring the second goal from Bournemouth as well? Because I need to tell you this: we didn't defend that well either. So we sort right. of gave him the second goal. The, the, you know, defending down the left wasn't there by the box, and we crossed it over. They, cro- you know, he was on his own for the cross. He could have just picked out anyone he wanted to cross the ball. Yeah, it's Christy, what? Sorry. Dinks in the box, yeah. Let's just do the usual, let's dig out producer Jacob today. Yeah. I'm just reading through the running order and that's why we, we, he's not put in the second goal here. Yeah, you can't blame Jacob. No, producer, yeah. look, no, but it, it YouTube. Was, he was forgetting. Wait a minute, let me go show YouTube. Look. Yeah, okay, come on. Let's get on with this because I'm telling you. He left it out. Well. Th- let's talk about the second goal then because I was just going to absolutely go past that. Solanke's got this header which... Like I said a minute ago, Solanke is a twenty million pound striker. I don't care if he was a twenty million pound striker. He he, he get, is a good head. I get that. He's not and, very good though. And again, he headed it back across the goal. That's fine. He gets the goal. It because was a good header. It was a good header. However, the cross should have been stopped, and the cross could have been stopped if we'd have been paying attention to the people on the left hand side. He had so much space to make that cross. He could have he could have waited and I don't know phoned his mum before he bloody put it across <laughs> mo- he had so much time to cross that ball he was so open so open and that came from two passes it's it just, just they typical. just stood back yeah it just stood back off him it was so frustrating so frustrating yeah it's typical how we have been defending I guess in the last uh, do you know what it is right I and maybe why I said last Monday Batara that I was a bit not looking forward to this weekend Mm -hmm. because at the moment it does feel like every shot that's against us is going in. It just seems like our defending is really poor. And it was kind of like here, you just think when Bournemouth got that second, it did think you did think, wow, this is going to be a a mountain to climb. You wouldn't be surprised if they come out in the second half and got more. I'll be honest, right? When we can see goals, it's almost like, you don't think we're going to concede the goal and all of a sudden it comes out of nowhere. Do you not feel like that sometimes, Dave? I don't know. I felt, I felt like that Saturday. I felt like we It comes were, out of nowhere, doesn't it? Th- there, was a, there, was a, there was a lot of times when I thought Bournemouth held the ball, played the ball quite fast and they looked really mm-hmm. quality. A lot of times in the first Especially half. Especially on the left-hand side, yeah. yeah. But we gave them the opportunity. We, we, they, I don't know that they carved the opportunities out. I think we sort of mistakenly gave them the opportunities. The first one we've already talked about. The second one really riled me because I, I think I said to you, look at all the space he's got. Look at the space. And that was just poor defending. Where was our right back at the time? I've got no idea. 
It was it was just it was, was a crazy. Or was it a two on one? Like I said, I haven't watched Heights back, but was it a two on one? I'm not too sure. The, the space, was it, was it, it an just overlap and an inverted and an overlap? I don't no, know. But. No, it was just he had far too much time to cross. Nobody shut him down. I know, I know it was all. Ryan Christie because I was sitting there going, what a wanker Ryan Christie is. Now. I mean, I don't think anybody. Bang. So you can't you can't say the header was good. You can't, I, I don't think you can blame Saluga for that either. The header was good, it, but the cross should have been stopped. On how many times have we said that in the past? You need to stop the cross. He had acres of space to make the cross. Acres. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm with you. I didn't expect us to concede again. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like it was constant, constant. Oh God, we're going to concede. In my view. Um, no, 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 no. Well, back to that Adebayo header. Probably should score that one as well. Do you reckon? Well, like I said, from where I was sitting, obviously we were side on angle, sort of like you know, in line with you, you say. Yeah, we're in line. Eighteen it. yard and the six yeah, yard, sort of. But so, yeah, we, we were one hundred percent sitting there going, "We've well, got to fucking score that. It's got to be a free header, surely." It was a total free header. But is look, this a time where we have to remember that Adebayo is still still learning? He's still young. He's this time last year still yeah. playing at Walsall, and look, he will learn from them. Mis- well not mistakes look, but he'll learn from their missed chances look you can say that about that chance right about the header but you can't say about the first one for the first one for me you've got to fucking score it like I love Ali Bayo look I wouldn't I wouldn't drop him I wouldn't do anything I can't criticise him like I, I, I'm not I'm not going to say a bad word about him the first one has to score it's a free hit in front of an open goal pretty much do you know what I'm saying mm. I mean you tell me if it's different like I said I haven't seen the highlights back but you tell me if it's any different from no, where, it's not, I'm, it's where, not I'm, different. where we're sitting it's clear and obvious it should be a goal. The second one, the free header, maybe. It's, you know what? It's a header. It's difficult because that has to be. It has to be very perfect to go in the back of that net with a yeah, header. It's very it, delicate. It's a very delicate skill and art. We all know yeah. this. He connects with it properly. He scores. He, but like I said, you, you, you'd expect your centre forward to score those goals. Yeah. But look, an open goal, like you say, obviously, is completely different to a header. But look, I expect him to take. One of the two chances. I mean, you effect, it, you, you're going to miss. I tell you what, some of the best strikers in the world miss chances like that. The headers, the second one. I'm saying. Hey, listen, he was central. He was central to the goal. He had all the goal, both mm. sides of the goal to aim at. He did hit it right with his head, which is disappointing. You'd expect your striker to score from that position. It was a golden opportunity, and and we've done all the good work getting back in it at two one. I mean, the run with Barry down the right, the cross. I mean, mm-hmm. a lucky deflection on goal sort of thing. But if he didn't score, then Burke would have scored it. Yeah. So I, I'm disappointed that he didn't get it because we deserved we deserved that second goal. We de- definitely deserved yeah. it. 100%. Well, it didn't come. And then that makes it five games now without a win. Four draws followed by that defeat. Um, it's, it's at a stage, right, where I said last week, I'm not going to judge us on the Bournemouth game. But is it now coming up with these two home games, Coventry and Huddersfield, where we can, we've got to sit there now and start saying, okay, we need at least four points from these next two home games. Is that fair to say that? Ah, it's, not, it's not unfair to say that. No, of course. I'm, I'm going to tell you now, we're going to get six points in the next two games. I actually six thought you was going to. Say, I thought you was going to say it was not fair to say that. So I'm, no, of course I thought I'm fair. glad you changed that. No, look, we're at home, right? Look... <laughs> I know we don't want to, we don't like to draw the time. Hey, listen, like don't forget we're Coventry on the table, though. Yeah, 100%. Because no, up until but the weekend, it didn't even cross mate. my mind they were at the top. But so they're, they're on form. Well, they are beatable. beatable right? Everyone's well, beatable in this well, league. I agree with you, but, you know, they're on form. They're coming yeah. full of confidence. What we need to do is have a morale boost in win. That's what we need. <laughs> um, and I agree with Luke. You know, we should, have, uh, we should be looking for at least four, at least four points, but hopefully six. Like you said, Huddersfield are on a downer as well. They've lost, what, two in the last three or whatever? I don't, I don't Started know. Started well, though, Huddersfield as well, because yeah. they were in the top six for a, a few few games this season already. But it is, is it getting to that stage now? I, and then look, I know I said last week about not panicking, but I've seen a few, few little murmurs on Twitter of people just worrying a little bit about how we're conceding goals and how we're uh, yeah, conceding natural. shots. And I think... The second tier podcast tweeted a stat today. I don't know if it's still up, but um, producer Jack has actually put it here. What a legend. <laughs> um, so goalkeepers with the lowest save percentage this season. So apparently 48% of shots on targets go in, according to producer Jacob. So that's like every other shot at Sluga is going in. At yeah, the you moment. can't blame the goalkeeper for that though. Every other shot on target, yeah. 
<coughs> which is, by the way, that's number one in, in the in the league. We are the worst at keeping shots on target out. I'm not surprised. Moment. I'm not surprised at that either. Why is that though? Why are we so? Why is why are we so bad at keeping these shots out? Because and and this is the thing. And look, let's get into it. Someone said it's Luger the problem. No, I don't think so. Do you? Do you both think so? I don't. How can you just blame Sluger? It's, that's wrong. No, you can't. All right, we can blame him. We can. You can sit there and blame. Look, uh, you, if blame you could blame certain him. people, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you can blame him for certain things. You can blame your centre half for certain things. You can blame the fact that we haven't got a fucking how many clear times starting squad every single week. You can, think, you can the start thing with the, the thing with these sort of statistics is that it doesn't take into account the position he was put in before he had to make a save or not make a save. That's the problem with these mm. sort of things. So when when you say, what do you say, 49% of shots? 48.4, yeah. Okay, 48.4% of shots he doesn't save. Well, you know what? That doesn't account for the defensive errors that gets the shot on him. And it doesn't account for the times where he's been left stranded by other people. It doesn't account for the times where he has a lucky rebound to them. So, you know, you might make a tremendous say and it's a lucky rebound it goes in. So, no, you can look at statistics and you can interpret them any way you want. So, no, it's not his fault. No so idea. This tweet from Daniel, it did say, is Sluga the problem? And then he's listed here um, the shots to goals ratio this season. And, look, and I think maybe it's fair to Sluga for us to have a little deep dive into, the, into these goals and, and the shots. So, Peterborough, one shot on target, no goals. West Good. Brom, six shots on target, three goals. But you go back to that West Brom game. The first one, Naismith just headed in his own net. Yep. Exactly. Is that even a shot on target? So, right? you know, so there's the point. No, is it? So you can take that one off then. The second goal at West Brom was the the one from the corner, which again, I don't know if Sluger missed the punch on that one or not, but either way. I Let's just write West Brom off. Barnsley, three shots, no goals. Birmingham, nine shots, five goals, to be honest. That game. Birmingham, let's forget that one. Sheffield United, one shot, no goals. Blackburn, five shots, two goals. And you look back at the Blackburn game and you think, probably couldn't have done anything about them two goals nah, either. No, nah, nowhere near. That Dolan one was top bins. The other one from Pickering was right in that bottom corner across goal, mm-hmm. which you meant to do as a, as a striker or fullback, wherever it is. Uh, Bristol City, two shots, one goal. Header from a free kick. Swansea, four shots, three goals. I know last week we mentioned could he have done better Swansea, maybe on yeah. two Look, of them. Swansea is the one game you can you can pull out as a stand up and go, yeah, do you know what? Maybe two of them he should have saved. But look. And Bournemouth, three is. shots, two goals. Happens. So total, 34 shots, 16 goals. Yeah. Um, if that's all you concentrate on, then, you know, you can use these stats and go, that's not a very good performance. What about... All the crosses he picks out off the air. When they go crossing, there's, a, there's, a, there's an attacker there ready to head the ball in. He catches it. What about those those interceptions? What about the times where he can he can, you know, just stop an attack like that? So you can use these stats any way you want. You can manipulate stats like this. So I think it's really really unfair to blame Sluka. Can I just say as well? So you say about obviously the amount of shots that we concede to the amount of goals we concede. Obviously, it's quite a high ratio, but. At the same time, you've got a fucking back four or back five in front of you at the same time to still defend them shots. It's, it's a team game at the end of the day. We can't pinpoint a goal key because the stats look, you know, awful on what you say is going for a goalkeeper. But I'm sorry, but I don't believe in I don't believe in that sort of thing. I mean, I like I like stats, certain stats, but not that. Yeah. But not if it's going towards like, oh yeah, she played a goalkeeper. No way. I mean, you, you can say right the first season in the championship we were back. The amount of like, goals we can see compared to chances or whatever else, you could probably say, all right, Slew probably at fault for about nine or ten of them in the first half of the season. Yeah, admittedly. But no, nah, not not in this, no. I think it's all team, it's all it's part of the whole team. And look, having an unsteady squad at the same time doesn't help. We all know this. Yeah. We can see chances. And unfortunately, right, the chances that we do concede are costly. Unfortunately. That's what happens. But I tell you what, it will change. It will change. But you need, to, you need to look. When you look at our goalkeeper, you look, you need to look further than just those stats. You yeah, need to course. look at his overall performance. And just, you know, if he's not catching balls when they're cross or they're not intercepting or punching away, then there's more goals that will be scored. So, you know, someone should look up how many times he's cleared the ball with a punch, how many times he's caught the ball from a cross, and then you can, you can analyse it more. So 
yes, it's disappointing that we concede goals, but you can't blame him for all of them. From a point of view then, if you ignore Sluger in this stat, I guess it's still kind of a worry that it is, at the moment, half the shots on target go in. And it's like you said, there's a deeper problem than it just being mm-hmm. Sluger can't keep every shot out. And injuries are clearly killing us at the moment. But it, you would just like to think that maybe in these next two home games, we can kind of start push, pushing that percentage up a bit more and maybe just try and keep a clean sheet. I think Jones said the other day, keep a clean sheet, we'll win games. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if he keeps... Uh, if Sluger keeps three or four clean sheets in a row, or, you know, out of six or five, then those stats look much better, don't they? Hang on a minute. The thing is as well, has he not kept like four, no, five clean sheets this season as well? Or four clean sheets? <clears throat> you could, you can, four, you can, I think. The thing, you can, t- the, the problem with these sort of things, and, and, you know, no disrespect to Daniel who made these. Uh, uh, Second tier podcast tweeted these stats today. Mm. Okay. So there's, there is no disrespect to their stats however you know you can pick whatever you like to make a point when you've got statistics anything in any any walk of life you can go from you can take a particular section and you can make it look what you want it to look like should we do a stat of percentage of a podcast but Taurus, it's close to the mic uh, 100% yeah, today today yeah I've done it I've turned you up a little bit today actually yeah, well, so. so it's all been a, it's been a, don't do that to me no <laughs> uh, let's read out what you guys said uh, to reply to this tweet from Daniel, uh, Rich says, so Daniel said, is Luger the problem? Rich says, yes, I think he is. I do rate him and think he was excellent last year, but I can't remember a save in the last three games. The goals aren't massively obvious errors, but I don't think it's harsh to question two of the Swansea goals and the second on Saturday. Which we touched on earlier. Yeah, no, no that's fair enough. Like, like you said, at certain points, that does happen. In certain games, he doesn't perform. We know this. But I feel like it's, lessening rather than increasing you know what I'm saying yeah and also I think like you said the amount of times this season where Sluga has pulled off really good saves and, and kept us in games and stuff um, Barnsley I think he pulled off a great save at, at one stage in that second half when we were holding on to that 1-0 lead so it's kind of like comes around and goes around I think what we say about VAR it goes, on, it goes well. unnoticed though when you're doing a good job it, sometimes yeah Daniel says, I don't think he's been at fault for many other than one at West Brom that I can recall, but also I reckon he'll be gone in the summer and Walton in on a free from Brighton. Really? Wow. Do you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. Really? I've seen a lot of things going swing. I've seen a lot about Sluga potentially being off in the summer. Yeah, Yeah. going back to Croatia, being homesick. I mean, he's just got married. I don't know if he's got a little kid or anything, but... Yeah, where do you you read all that? It's just Twitter rumours, isn't it? Yeah, Twitter rumours and there's there's a fuel shortage, you know? (laughs) You just... just, you just go on for it, right? He's, so drive a he's not going to go. Yeah, he's not going to go. No, he's he's going to stay. I'd be very surprised if that. No offense. And what have you based that on? on, more money on my gut feeling. So no, you haven't even seen him. You've just made that up in your head. Exactly. But yeah. the most, like we just said, most of social media, they they can say what they like. People get on the bandwagon and they requote it. So I'm going to go with and listen up, everyone. He's not going in the summer. If he goes in the summer, um, he's I'll, get, text I'll get Bataro to have a Saluka tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, don't! Still waiting for the last one, mate. Jamo says, "Is our defence the problem? If the opposition are able to get shots off for the keeper, why is it all on him? At what point do we look to the defence for allowing these shots to happen?" Huge critic of Sluga when he joined, as he was pony. He's so far from the issue now, though. Oh, see, I agree with him. I agree with Jamo totally. And you also, can't go, go blame back the on defence as well, right? Okay, some yeah, the defence sometimes, like I said, obviously you know shortage of numbers and whatever else. But I'll be honest, I think the mid- I think the problem is midfield. For us, massively. Our midfield lets us down at the moment. I'm not putting blame on people. I'm just saying because an unsettled midfield. Well, for me, we've the got midfield massive is, injury problems. That's yeah, the issue. That, we yeah, had massive saying, yeah. injury problems. If we had a full fit squad, I I, mm-hmm. I genuinely think then we'd, we be, we'd be much, much yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. Adam says, I've defended him, but he's done some pretty bad errors so far. Ball under the foot and nearly a derby uh, version two against Peterborough. Rushing out against Swansea and then slipping over against Bournemouth. I don't think he's done bad when it comes to saves. If you look at the goals, they're taken well. I don't know. I guess maybe you just say with that, the errors aren't... A few of them errors didn't lead to the goals, so it's quite harsh to just point out hey, look, the errors. But, you know, well, sometimes... We look shaky everywhere sometimes, so... Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you know, you, you can have your opinions, Adam, totally. 
and sometimes you're right and sometimes we're wrong you know um, Paul says after his initial dodgy spell after he arrives Luger has won us far more points than cost us a lot of the defensive problems are down to not having a settled defence due to injuries there you go and Paul's, we're all on the same wavelength yeah. aren't we I think I think we want Luger to be better than, better we want him to to save more however you can't criticise him for everything is it being better or is it looking better to the you know the, if we were winning, if we were winning saying. games, if he was making the odd mistake and we're winning games three one, then no one worries about it. That's the problem, is it? So you know, you, you can't just blame him for this. You just can't. So mm. you know, I'm I kind of like him. I kind of like him. I think he's got better. He's grown on me, and I think he's going to be a class, a good keeper for us. To be honest, I, I can I can agree more because I like the guy as well. And the thing is, he shows some passion. All right, he sometimes fucks up. He might get away with certain things, but look, at the same time. The guy wants to do well. Let's not dig him out sometimes. Let's just like stay with him, support him, and we'll see how he does it in the season. If he's not good enough, then he'll move on. Hey, look, I it. don't think I, I don't think there was anyone on Saturday that would have blamed him for that result. Well, no, he didn't do anything wrong Saturday. Exactly. So you know, yeah, he's made errors, but everybody makes errors. Everyone, everyone, every part of the pitch makes an error. The problem is when you're a goalkeeper, it could be a crucial it's highlighted. Error. Yeah, you know, it's really, really highlighted. But a defender slips over, that you know, that they score. Is it the defender's fault or the goalkeeper's fault? You know, back Sluger all the way at the moment. He's our keeper. You should be backing him. So going into these next two home games, Coventry and Huddersfield, we touched on it earlier. Are they must wins? No. Um, not, not, not yet, no. We're still early doors, mate. Come on. We're, what, 10 games into the season? Nah, it's 10 yet. games into the season though For me I think we need a win Is it a must win? I think we need to win Okay I'll tell you what, I'll, put, I'll put you another way Yep Must win In what aspect? As in I think For this season For the for I don't know Obviously We're irrelevant But a lot of fans said We're confident going into this season Saying We're yeah. potential dark horses for playoffs We want to finish top 10 Yeah that's fair enough But look We haven't had the squad for it this last, Thus far Ooh. Like right, Shakespeare. Yeah, sorry. But, yeah. <laughs> but we haven't had a squad for it so far. In all fairness, you give me a fit squad for the first 10, 12 games, which we haven't had, then I'd look at it and go, oh, potentially, yeah, you're going to progress. But look, it would I'll be tell you what, I, I don't, I, I'll be honest, I'm going to say it now. I don't care if we finish two or three places lower than what we did last season. I don't care if we survive by five or six points. If it carries on like this till, towards the end of the season and we only just stay up, and we have fucking 10 injuries every week, I don't care. I really don't care. There you go. I'll really? Say I don't wow. care. No, I don't. I think, what? I think, really def- I, I, no, I, I just think at the moment, you know, it's still early doors to think about who might be in the playoffs, who might finish in relegation. You know, Derby's got a bit of a struggle if they get some more uh, points deducted from them than we got. So I don't see us in that scrap, but if we don't start winning soon, we'll be down in that scrap and we don't need to be there. So I'm saying, it's not a must win, but we, we need to win. It, we need to win to push on, and we need to put a, f- a few games in, in a row where we don't lose. You know, not, not draw. Win, win, draw, win, that sort of thing. And then we push ourselves up the league. Everything's, everything's a bit more rosy. Okay, I guess it's like you said there as well. You don't want to get to that stage where, say we don't pick up a win in these next two home games, and you've got tough away games to follow. And then if you get to that Christmas period and you're still on that poor run of form, it can just then create that nervy atmosphere. And then, I don't know, yeah. going into January, Kenilworth Road becomes nervy. And it's like you're playing these teams that you're thinking, all right, we should pick up three points here. But there's that. And it, uh, we felt that under Graham Jones a lot. And I remember Birmingham at home in January when we lost 2-1. And everyone turning up thinking, we have to win today. And it was like nervy around Kenilworth. It was quiet and it was nervy. That's, I think, why we need to pick up points soon. So it doesn't get to that stage where Kenilworth yeah, Road is look, like that and it's and the players feel that. But then again, if you pick up six in a row, if you pick two threes now, we get the next two home wins, mm-hmm. then things you look different. Enough, things you know look different, saying, you know. Yes. Look, I understand what you're saying. I, I do I do get it. It's just at the moment, I just don't think we can judge what we're doing until we have got what we have. Because at the moment, we don't have it. Because well, for whatever to reason, Jones is going to be a few weeks away yet. From yeah, like on your Denver returning and exactly, and Pelly's out for two weeks. And also, as well, Sonny Bradley getting back as well. And I people like Sonny. Do you know what? I, I t- no, only people sit on Sunday we have we so we've missed Sonny so much. I think you know he's solid at the back, isn't he? It's disappointing that he's still 
mm. not 100 percent with us. He calms the team down as well. Look, so I'm not going to go on a little fanboy rant or whatever. But look, at the same <laughs> time, we know it's true. I know it's true. I've always said it's true. But look, it's just what it is at the moment. It is what it is. We will we will get there. We'll get it better. And I, like I said, I really don't care if we finish 12th, 14th, 15th. I really don't care. I like to see progression, but until we can get the players back and then to push forward, I really can't see it at the moment. If we lose another couple of players again, then you look at it and you, you go, oh, we get a point against commentary. We were saying like another two injuries. We've got like seven or eight people out injured. Do you know what I mean? You get a point against commentary and then you get a point, uh, say, you know, you nick a 1-0 win against Huddersfield, but you get absolutely battered. You take that. Mm-hmm. I genuinely, right. you don't want to see it, but you take it at the same time. I right? genuinely believe that when we get back to full strength, we're going a good run. We'll, we'll put that run together. You know, look, there's always a team that puts a run together, isn't there? There's always a team that is is sort of well, like, like Barnsley last year, didn't they? Yeah, they they bit, had a poor bit, start and, and picked mm-hmm. up points. So why can't we pick up points? Like, do you know what? Also, another thing, right? I'd like to add. It. I don't think it's a bad thing that sometimes with the injuries happening. We have to rotate the squad. I don't think it's a bad thing that all these players are playing together in different positions. Yeah, I don't I think it's a that. bad thing because they'll get used to it as well. And I'll tell you what, we'll be in a much better position. I promise you this. I promise you. We'll be much better. Do you know, I just want to also say, if you don't mind me saying this, uh, going back well, to the Bournemouth. Quick, yeah, it'd be very quick. <laughs> going back to the Bournemouth game, I literally said to you when, we le- when we're leaving the stadium, I can't see Bournemouth winning the league nah. at all. Well, they're top and looking pretty good so Well, far, they might so. be top right now. But I'm telling you, I well, you better mark this, Jacob. Um, I don't think Bournemouth will win the league. Nah. Well, let's finish on some Instagram questions today for a few minutes. Uh, we've actually touched on quite a few of these. Mike said his Coventry a must win. We've all said no, but we'd like to pick up points. Um, Jack says thoughts on form recently. Uh, too many jaws. I guess we've kind of touched on that as well. Yeah, but you know what? That's what that's a disappointing thing because too many draws. Um, when you look at them and thought, if we'd have converted some of those draws to wins, look where we'd be. We'll be all right. Harrison says, thoughts on Thorpe signing? Because we signed uh, Little Thorpe from Spurs. I don't know what I called him Little Thorpe, but <laughs> brought him in from Spurs the other day. Is he, he's a youngster. He's going to be pushing on the first team door, according to Nathan Jones. He'll be playing development games as well. This is good to have mm-hmm. someone like this. So apparently, Spurs fans said he's, he's not bad. I've heard so as well, yeah. yeah. It's encouraging, isn't it, that we can recruit people from from the a Premier League sort of status. Um, yeah, let's hope he develops and he's a really fantastic player for us. It's exciting to have a player like this as well that can develop still. And you look now at the, the squad we have compared to when we first come up and it was like, mm-hmm. we have a lot of younger players now and they've exactly. got the chance yeah. to develop and keep us in and the become, established championship And become, become that, you know, you can't win anything with kids thing. He'll be better. Did, did he, was he at the game Saturday? He came at the end, didn't he? Yeah. So, yeah, he can't at the end, so like, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, Daniel apparently has written this question. Although I remember producer Jacob saying this to me the other day. Do you reckon Kenilworth Road will get a trial of safe standing? Right, let me just say. No. I stand up at Kenilworth Road every week. It was not a safe day for you about. It's quite yeah. safe where I do it. It's quite safe. You know, you guys sitting in the Kenny, you don't stand up. That's fine. I stand up, it's quite safe. They ain't going to do safe standing at Kenny, are they? They're going to power no, not a chance. But a power court, great. If we want to stand up, I'm quite happy. I can see yeah. a power court behind both goals. The best thing about safe standing is that your space is reserved. You know, back in the olden days, when before you boys started coming <laughs> to football with me, you had to get into the Kenilworth Road quite early to, to get your spot. Well done, YouTube. Um, you have to get in the Kenny quite a lot to save your spot. Yeah, sorry, YouTube, your video's just gone, but just in time because that's all we've got time for today. Um, thank you so much for listening. Can I just say, the only thing when you start talking about safe standing there, all I can think about is Dwayne, and I know he's listening. You at Sunderland away, horrendous. That's all I can think of. <laughs> Nearly fell down, this, down all the seats yeah. when he we wasn't scored very that safe standing. that day. Yeah, he's yeah. not, he's not about was, safe standing. That was you the alcohol, the seats, mate. mate. You, know, you sit that there. The well, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so he much for watching. Get us on YouTube off. at Owen the Town, and we shall see you next week.